The Microsoft Surface Pro 7 is here, and you know what, not much has changed. It's exactly what you expect. The improvements are incremental, and you know what, that's not a bad thing. It's really still the same versatile two-in-one device that is still the best tablet PC that can actually replace your laptop. And design-wise, little to nothing has changed since the original design. I'm conflicted because the design, it doesn't feel too dated. I've always liked it, but at the same time, it's dated because the form factor hasn't fundamentally changed for years. Now, I've always liked the industrial feel of the Surface Pro and its kickstand. It's a little sharp and edgy resting on your lap, if that makes sense, but it's always felt like its own thing, different from anything else out there, and I think that's really been a strength of it. Now, you'll still also have your SD card slot underneath the stand, kind of hiding there as well, but if you really want that new, new design, Microsoft's pointing you towards the Surface Pro X as the next evolution of this device, right? That one has a bigger screen, thinner bezels, and it's just a thinner device. The Surface Pro is really kind of becoming the classic now. Now, if you wanted thinner bezels in the Surface Pro 7, you still won't get them here. It's a 12.3 inch display that still looks great with its 2736 by 1824 display, but I think we have a right to complain about them now since they're still just as thick as my thumb. Now, the big change, Finally, a USB-C port that everyone was asking for last year, it's made it to the 7. It takes the place where the mini display port used to be to connect to larger screens, but the USB-C port here, it's not Thunderbolt 3 compatible, so that means it won't support any external GPUs for pro users. Now, this year's other incremental upgrades, Intel's 10th generation processors with configurations ranging from a dual-core i3 and quad-core i5 and i7 processors. But there's one big change, and this one's not for the better. The overall battery life for the Surface Pro 7 has dropped by roughly three hours. Three hours! So we're going from 13.5 on the Surface Pro 6 to 10.5 on the Pro 7. That's a huge deal, especially if you're someone who might be upgrading. Now, Microsoft provided me with a Surface Pro 7 with an Intel i5, 256 gigs of storage, and eight gigs of RAM for this review. In the first few days, I immediately felt the difference in battery from the 6. I had to even look it up to see if anything changed or if it was just me using it too much because, you know, when you set it up the first few days, you're always like twiddling with it. No, it wasn't the case. I mean, it literally is a three hour difference. Now, battery life is valuable and you know what? You're gonna probably end up plugging it in before then. I always bring my power cables with me when I'm on the go for all my portables, but just fundamentally losing three hours is something that you should absolutely consider if this is something you're looking to upgrade. Now, the Surface Pro 7 comes in two colors, platinum, which is their silver color, and black. If you're using a Surface, you're gonna need their type cover. That costs $159, and it's essential for using it. Plus, you got the Surface Pen. It's an extra $99 with its 4,096 pressure points and 21 millisecond lag, which is fast, but you look at something like the Apple Pencil is even more responsive as it's dropped down to nine milliseconds. Now, Microsoft sent me the new accessories in their poppy red that has this kind of crimson brick, almost red holiday color to it. Ice blue is the other new accessory color option this time around. The base model for this device comes with 128 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM with an Intel Core i3. That starts at $749, but you know what? You can take it up if you want to go all the way to the max. The Surface Pro 7 goes up to one terabyte of storage, 16 gigs of RAM with an i7 processor for $2,299. Now, when you look at this device, Microsoft, they still bring its true hybrid OS that lets you switch around and navigate with your fingers on the screen or with the trackpad at any time. You can go back and forth. It still has, hands down, the best keyboard attachment for any tablet device. And you know what? It's still a tablet that doesn't really have the best tablet experience. We know it's tablet apps. They're kind of limited compared to especially what iPad OS brings. It's not even close because all the developers, they're going there first. But everything you know about the Surface Pro 6 from a usability standpoint, is exactly the same on the Pro 7. Now, if you're a gamer, you can game on the Surface Pro. It syncs with your Xbox account for game saves, achievements, but I still received a warning that my integrated graphics card with the Intel Core i5 processor wasn't ideal to run a game like Gears of War 5, but it still pushed through. Now, it handles media consumption for the most part just fine, but the actual tablet experience, again, just isn't nearly as good with the underpinnings of Windows kind of still creeping up on you here and there when you're doing things like, let's say you want to look at your pictures folder, it takes you out into like the actual OS to find pictures. If you want to tweak your display settings, again, it takes you out back to Windows. So you're dealing with it right in your face. It switches between and it's just not in its own tablet interface the entire time. You just get pulled out of the tablet experience because of just how Windows is built. So is the Surface Pro 7 for you? That's the big question. It's kind of taken some time for them to finally get here, 
bringing USB-C has been kind of the biggest piece of the puzzle that has been missing, but then now, all of a sudden you have battery life that takes a huge hit. I think depending on how you use it, that may or may not affect your decision, but again, it's really a significant hit. Your ecosystem, it's always gonna dictate the devices that you purchase, but at the end of the day, right, the bottom line is the Surface Pro is still the best tablet PC on the market, and that hasn't changed. Well, until the Surface Pro X arrives.